It's time to transcend and become the ultimate bash god that you were always meant to be. Because this build is just pure fucking insanity. Being able to push 140 with sub-optimal gear? Hell yeah. Speedrun tier 120s in three minutes? Hell yeah. And Ubers? Well, you tell me if it gets the job done. I'm even going to showcase two different versions of the build that are equally as insane. And why is that? Well, my man, because I'm a fucking bro, that's why. I'm not going to make two separate videos just to show off a small change in the build. Instead, you pick the one you prefer and start blasting it. So how do these two versions differ? Well, damn, first we have the pushing variant where you pull enemies in and make them explode. This is the most consistent of the two, which should be capable of pushing to 145. I'll be focusing on this one mainly as it's my favorite. And then we have the GigaChad version where you're running Wrath of the Berserker for ultimate damage and drop kicking demons in the nutsack. But hey, Mr. Para Gaming Big Dick Senpai, haven't you already made this version on the channel? Hell yeah, my man. But I've optimized it further and you can now keep up Wrath of the Berserker permanently. While I'll be focusing on the former, I'll showcase how you swap to this one and also have a planner for it. But first, let's talk about why both of these builds are pure insanity. They are both bleed builds, meaning we are using gushing wounds and scaling it to insanity. On top of that, they are both also dual wield setups to hit enemies as fast as possible and not being forced to spend 30 billion gold on two-handed bash gear. The bleeding in turn comes from the berserk ripping aspect, which we obviously slap on a two-hander for maximum damage. We then need to be a bit careful of what we scale, as bleeding via this aspect follows another damage calculation than regular bleeding. Wait what? Careful? Are you a soy boy cuck piece of shit, Mr. Para Gaming? Ah, my bad, I meant to say. Let's slap on the biggest dick damage multipliers possible for big damn my man, and we shall make our enemies explode with ease. I'm also rocking a few ubers in this godly steel grasp setup. Do you need them? Nope. But they're useful for sure. The godliest of the bunch is Tyrael's Might being able to stack up 20 million bleeds just by itself, which is pretty damn insane. All right, that's a bit of the basics. Before heading into the gear and aspects, let's take a look at the skills used. First, we have Rupture. This one is just pure Gotia for both of the builds. It grants a whopping 40% attack speed along with 10% big dam in the Paragons. And for the non-steel grasp version, it's what keeps up Wrath of the Berserker permanently. For Shouts, we're using Warcry along with Challenging Shout for big dam and defensives. And obviously no Rallying Cry because that spell is just a waste of a skill slot. If you're running the Steel Grasp, Tyrael's Might version, then it also requires Iron Skin as you need to stay on full health. What's amazing about this skill is that it's bugged in Season 4. It was fixed on the Season 5 PTR, but it's currently bugged and instantly heals you to full health. And then, of course, Steel Grasp. This skill is just insane when pushing, being able to stack up enemies along with being able to gain both berserking and vulnerable when necessary. And considering we're only dealing damage when berserk and when enemies are vulnerable, Let's just say both of those are pretty fucking important. Okay, now it's time. Time for my hecking gear and aspects, that is. To start off, my gear is good, but it's not perfect seeing as you would require a German citizenship or a fat credit card to get the gear maxed out. With perfect gear, you can probably gain 50 to 100% more big damn. Either way, let's start with the helmet. Shaco is goaded as fuck, but you can also use Tusk Helm of Jorits in case you're a shit newbie. I'd also focus on masterworking the cooldown reduction or max life here. For chest, Tyrael's Might is just pure god tier. The stats on this thing are just amazing, but the passive damage it provides is what we're after. 
I'd focus on masterworking the maximum resistance and damage reduction here. And in case you haven't got this one yet, grab Rage of Haragarth. The lucky hit here does not work with the two-handed sword expertise, nor the berserk ripping aspect, but it can reset your cooldowns like crazy via rupture, as the lucky hit on that thing is massive. Also, focus on the damage reduction for masterworking then. Next up, you want the Pain Gorges. This is not only for clearing packs of enemies, however, because you can also use it on the bosses for Big Dam. Wait, what the hell? How is that even possible? Well, damn my man, by pulling in enemies, you're marking them with the Pain Gorges. You can then spread the damage to the boss and do insane amounts of damage. I've seen bleed ticks for up to 2 billion and rupture of over 10 billion using this tech. An absolute banger. And definitely focus on the crit chance for masterworking as it's the most important stat for the bleed build. After that, we have the pantaloonies. Bash ranks and imposing presence are by far the most important as to deal big damn and not fucking die El Mao. To get everything capped, you should look for a greater affix one. Getting both GA bash and resistance is expensive as shit, however, so I'd probably grab it on the boots instead. Either way, slap on the Iron Warriors aspect for the uber setup and the undying aspect in case you're running the other setup. Alright, let's take a look at the sneakers. You're basically looking for these with one exception. Strength or war cry ranks instead of the fire resistance. And if you're wondering about the crowd control duration everywhere, that is supposedly granting extended challenging shout duration. For aspect, hectic is goaded as hell. Next up are the interesting stuff. The weapons. For Big Daddy Hammer, grab this one. By far the most important master working is Bash Cleave, and I'd split the vulnerable and crit damage on your gear. I've also been getting a bunch of questions about how to temper these. To do this, make a rogue. You then grab the weapons from your barb, temper, and send them back. Another question I've been getting is what is the optimal ratio between vulnerable and crit damage? Well, damn. Any ratio between 1 to 5 or 1 to 15 has been suggested. It all depends on what gear you're rocking and what your crit chance is. Then for the two-hander, you're going to slap on the berserk ripping. For one-handers, the rapid aspect and moonrise. You need a one-handed mace to be able to use bash, but the other one should ideally be a sword or an axe. And obviously, the big daddy grand puppy. You can also use any random two-handed sword and add the elements aspect into the mix. The damage difference was quite small, but the Grand Puppy is way more badass. And then we have the jewelry. For Amulet, you want something like this one, but with imposing presence instead of guttural yell. The adaptability aspect is absolutely bonkers for the bash damage, but doesn't work with bleed. But honestly, man, there's just no other good alternatives, so just use it. And finally, the rings. Two damage while berserking rolls will take you over the edge, and Warcry cooldown reduction is just absolutely bonkers. Other than that, the inner calm aspect and bold chieftains is what you're looking for. For gems, I'm rocking lightning, shadow, and poison, as we have both fire and cold resistance in the paragons. Another important stat that you definitely want here is chance to make enemies vulnerable, to keep it up permanently. And why don't I have it? Well, shit, I did 200 re-rolls to try and get it, so I definitely suggest buying one instead, lol. Well, damn my man, gear and aspects are now complete. How about being a fucking legend and drop a sub? Yeah, do it, I dare you. And we'll check out the weapon arsenal for rupture. Set that shit to two-handed sword. If you get a killing blow with it, then you can gain the increased bleeding damage from the weapon expertise with ease. And for the bash, set them to dual wield, obviously. What about the weapon expertise, then? Well, shit, son. The two-handed axe is the best by far. The two-handed sword expertise is all right, but also kind of shit, as it doesn't even work with Tyrael's might. Maybe on De La Mau. Well, shit, son, it's skill tree a fucking clock, and you know it, baby. Let's take a look. 
bash. Well, obviously, since it's a bash build, we also grab enhanced bash. This is, however, not enough to stay at max fortify, but it's helpful. The core skills can suck a big, huge goddamn lollipop. The defensives we obviously want, as we don't want to hecking die El Mao. I bricked my amulet, but you should be able to get a fuck ton of ranks in imposing presence and become an immortal god. We are also rocking four skin in the Uber setup to stay at full health, and it's also bugged, which is lovely. I think it's called four skin at least, not sure I've had a bit too many, I think. Challenging shout along with enhanced challenging shout is a must to stay alive as well. Next up, we have the big boy brawling skills. War cry? Hell yeah. This one also solves the rest of our fortify to stay at max at all times. Raid leader is also massively important as it's our only source of healing apart from iron skin. We then head on over to the weapon mastery skills. These are godly. Grab as many as possible and you want cut to the bone along with counteroffensive on your amulet for massive multipliers. Rupture is then insane for the big attack speed damage and steel grasp along with enhanced and fighter's steel grasp grants the ability to pull in enemies, make them vulnerable and gain some berserking. Next we go to the ultimate skills. Duelist is insanely strong, but Wallop is pretty dog shit as it doesn't boost our bleeds. So in case you need a bit more damage reduction, then you drop this piece of shit and put it into martial vigor instead. And finally, gushing wounds. Absolutely bonkers. Stacking bleed to insane levels. Let's just hope this passive doesn't get gutted in season 5 LMO. Well shit son. Skill tree done. What do you say about checking out my amazing Paragon board? Hell yeah. If you're rocking my old bash build, then nothing has changed here really. And why is that? Because it's fucking perfection, my man. Find ways to improve it, and I'll gladly take a seat on my nutsack. Anyhow, Wrath is important for the extra crit damage. We then go to Flawless Technique, which grants a massive 8% crit chance, and we socket ambidextrous for the big dam, along with boosting the nearby friendly nodes. You also have Cold Resistance here, and the Hemorrhage Legendary node right here. Pick this one last, as to not fuck up my beautiful paragons. Next up is the Blood Rage node, which should be capped, which should just barely be capped if you grab two damage while berserking rolls on the rings and masterwork one of them. Don't believe me? Well, damn, son. Let's check. Hell yeah. You're also socketing exploit for the vulnerable damage and easy way to apply it. Next up is the Decimator node, which is up permanently as Rupture always overpowers, and then I for the damage reduction and damage while berserking. And finally, Marshall. Having it here sorts the last of the Blood Rage node along with granting a bunch of damage reduction, which is hecking nice. All right, my man, are you ready? Ready for what? Ready to get hecking good and you know it. Let's check out both of the play styles as it's important to not screw everything up. First, we have my favorite, the Uber Steel Grasp setup. Here you're first using Steel Grasp to gather enemies. If you're pushing, then you can keep pulling them until they're unstoppable. You want them in front of you ideally to use Tyrael's Might and to make sure to cleave all enemies. Steel Grasp also applies the Pain Gorge's gloves along with Rupture. You then want to use Rupture for the attack speed and every time the bonus drops. You'll see this by attacking slowly as hell. Every three seconds or so, you can use Steel Grasp to gain vulnerable on all enemies unless you have a good chance to make enemies vulnerable roll on one of your items. The Shouts and Iron Skin should be used on cooldown, making the build insanely easy to play. And when you're bossing, that's when this build truly shines. If the boss has adds, then you can simply pull them in and gain the Pain Gorger bonus. This will grant you a huge damage bonus with ease. Alright, and then on to the other setup. 
This one is all about mashing your keyboard as hard as possible and do big damn. For vulnerable and berserking, you also have kick. What's important, however, is not to waste the kicks. When you pop Wrath of the Berserker, you will need to drop kick one newbie in the nutsack, followed by stacking up maximum fury again, and then drop kicking them once more to gain the full benefit. Other than that, it works exactly like the other build with one exception. You want to be using Rupture way more. This is due to it resetting your cooldowns with ease, and you can gain permanent Wrath of the Berserker with this. I also decided to drop the hectic aspect in this build, and instead use Metamorphosis. This is to make it easier, as you can just evade in case you get stunned by some annoying frost enemy or whatever, and gain Unstoppable. And while we're at it, let's take a look at the Lilith fight, in case you're a shit newbie that can't kill her, or if you're a Gigachad pumper that is boosting for gold here. This build is probably the easiest out of all builds to blast her down. Firstly, you should engage with Rupture to gain the buff along with Warcry, then simply blast her down and make her explode with another Rupture. That's the easiest part. Phase 2 is slightly more annoying. You'll do the same here. If you have my gear or better, then you can actually skip the blood orbs if you're lucky. Either way, you're going to be running around anti-clockwise and blast her down exactly like in Phase 1. Then it's all about running around in circles and dodging the balls flying towards you. The two platforms is the easiest, and the third one you can easily just use Challenging Shout and Iron Skin if necessary. If you're boosting newbies, then tell them to join you after you've blasted her down and you're forced to run around in circles here. Well shit, you're still here? That's pretty based. Now get out of here and start blasting my man or woman.